This is a time for public comment. Citizens are given an opportunity to comment on any proposition coming before the board during public comment. The board also takes public comment on items to be placed on future board agenda or under their purview. Public comment for public hearings items is taken during those individual public hearings at 1.30 p.m. or soon thereafter as the item can be heard. I have a list of speakers. I'm Frank Feckety in the Hudson Beach area. Uh, I've seen the boom. I've seen the bust. I think everybody paid their, I paid a lot of taxes in this county since that time. <clears throat> now, as a resident, the impact of this county park would mean a lot to the people in the area. And uh, so right away, it's a win situation, not just for our area, After Mr. for the Butler, entire Jeremy county. Hi, my name is Thomas Butler. And I would just like to support the Sun West Park project. I have two letters here that are public record that were sent to Jack Mariano, the chairman. One is from the Greater Wesley Chapel Chamber of Commerce. <clears throat> they basically say that they are in support of using the extra money for a splash pad, north restrooms, and improved parking for 500 cars. I also have a letter from the West Pasco Chamber of Commerce basically saying the same thing. Uh, I moved to Florida in 1996 uh, from Connecticut. I've been coming down to Florida since I was five years old. The one thing I've always come back here and why I came to live here is clean water, clean beaches, and beautiful sunsets. And I think that it's as simple as your children. Your children are your most important thing. To make a child happy, all you need is a bucket, a shovel, some clean sand, and some clean water. You keep them busy. You keep your families busy. You keep them as families. And the only other thing I have as a suggestion is that I think that every county commissioner on anything, not just this, should have to go there and see what is going on. I think that is your duty. Also, I think that we should have a meeting if something important as this should be at night when everybody can attend. I have a lot of friends that are working, business people. They just, especially in this economy, they can't afford to come down here. And I think that uh, something this important, more people should be here to represent what's going on, whether it's this or anything else. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jeremy Harding, and then after that, Pamela Payon. Uh, I'm here today to support the uh, SunWest uh, Harbor Town and SunWest Mines Park project. Um, I've spent a lot of time out there, seen a lot of people um, coming out to enjoy and support uh, a couple of the events we've had. Uh, I want to build on what he said about uh, coming at night. I've got over 750 signatures of people uh, supporting the project from uh, several of these events. Uh, you know, obviously, the working people can't show up here You know, if they have a 9-to-5 job. Uh, to these meetings, uh, so uh, only the people who have a flexible schedule can can be here. But uh, with the funding, 87% of it's been uh, allocated to Wesley Chapel. Um, logistically, it's it's really hard for West Pasco uh, families and people to, to make it to Wesley Chapel to enjoy those. Um, right now, you guys have approved 3.9% of the total funding over the last 22 years uh, to West Pasco. Uh, I think we should use the remaining funds, which would give us still less than 12% on this side of the county, to build this park right. Uh, if we don't, we're going to continue to be the laughing stock of the Tampa Bay area. Uh, you know, Pasco is known for doing things and not doing it all the way. Uh, this might be a way to turn this around, show the Tampa Bay area that we are a, a player in this. And I think this funding from your county belongs here. This is you are a coastal county, paying coastal county taxes, coastal county insurance, and we really have none of the benefits of being a coastal county. My name is Pamela Payone. I live at 11235 Tamarix Avenue, Port Ritchie, Florida. I just got a picture I'd like to share with all you guys. I work at Hudson High School. I'm a Pasco County school employee. I'm an IA. And I've sponsored the class of 2015. Okay, I work with students for the past 17 years of Pasco County. And quite a few of them are here with us to represent us as a whole. We decided to do like a pay it forward program and take something on as a senior class coming into the 2015. And with Mr. Jack Mariano, the kids and I, and we all discussed that it's something good to give back to the community would go to the mines. The kids have worked really hard, as you can see, 
they've cleaned up and they were there for about maybe three hours and they filled up an entire dumpster of trash. They've given up a Friday and they said they want to do more. They feel in a way that this is their hometown and they want to see and make a difference. They feel, some of them don't even drive. Why should they go to Clearwater for a beach? Okay, why should they have to go to Wesley Chapel? Why should they go over to Wiregrass? Why should they go over to there to go see things? You know, why go to St. Pete? That's even further. They can't do it. They can't afford it. Hudson High School is a Title I school. They have no money. These kids sometimes scrape pennies just to get a lunch. But for them, they want to have enjoyment in their backyard. And that's what makes the difference to them. And for them, their families have been here for generation to generation, and they want to see this generation continue to grow. I mean, you go to Hudson Beach, um, there were no about you guys, but I won't swim in the water over there, okay? A lot of the kids won't, and they say it's not a beach. They want to see the prettiness. They want to see the water. They want to see the splash pads, okay? They want to go to the volleyball games, okay? A lot of these kids that are here today, some of them do sports. They're cheerleaders. They do volleyball. They do soccer. And what more is that if we have that beautiful sand over at the mines? Okay, and then we get the sand. The sand is great, which is working really good, you got. But yet you need parking. So you need the 500 people at least to do the parking. But these children is what we need to make a difference. This is your future is what And the mines about. we feel as taxpayers can do a good difference. I'm just in support of uh, the extra parking. Second bathroom is going to be very important in order to keep our water clean. Okay, resolution number 14240. Whereas students of Hudson High School's class of 2015, along with sponsor Pamela Payone, okay, Payone, started a community service project called Pay It Forward. And whereas with the help of Mrs. Payone, the Pay It Forward project was able to arrange and organize the cleanup of SunWest Park. And whereas members of the class of 2015 and the Hudson School Varsity and Junior Varsity cheerleaders participated in the cleanup, of SunWest Park on Friday, July 11, 2014, and whereas about 50 Hudson High School students helped rid the park of glass bottles, cans, and numerous amounts of other debris. And whereas the class of 2015 strives to leave a legacy they and the community can be proud of and enjoy. Now therefore be it resolved by the Board of County Commissioners of Pasco County, Florida, in regular session duly assembled that said board hereby recognizes the volunteers of Hudson High School's class of 2015 for their service and dedication to our community. Done and resolved this 22nd day of July, 2014, signed by the board. Move approval. Yep. All in favor say aye. 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 I want to thank everyone, especially at, at Hudson, for all the work they have done every step of the way. Um, I've given talks out at 5A in Hudson as well. Uh, Dr. LaRoche, what a, what a great principal you have to help you lead. <laughs> I actually missed this shot, getting ice. Uh -huh. You were getting ice to break so we could get the glass out of the sand. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but uh, I just want to thank you guys for what you're doing. I think it's a huge project for us. My name is Jenna Weisberg. I've been going to Hudson since a freshman. Um, going to the coastal cleanup, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into, but going there and just cleaning it up just made a world of difference for me, and I'm sure my fellow classmates and friends can agree with me that picking it up and actually have something in Hudson to where we can go and not have to drive an hour away to Clearwater to have fun. We can have it in Hudson, Florida, and Pasco County made a world of difference and just 
being there and picking everything up just made me feel better. My name is Kennedy Crowder. Um, a point that I would like to make is we don't really have a lot of things to do around here. So, you know, teenagers like us, we have to drive an hour away to have fun with our friends, you know? And that's just, I think it'd be a lot safer than driving all the way down 19 for an hour. You know, it's less of a chance of us getting into accidents or any other bad situation, something right in our backyard that's safe and fun to do and things we can do all the time would be really great. It'd be a really huge impact on Hudson. We're going to get her back. She's looking for a splash pad. <laughs> Good morning, commissioners. Uh, George Holtz. Guess why I'm here today. Here to get. Uh, hopefully, this is the final thing we get to get <clears throat> done on the uh, SunWest project. And basically, I'm here to talk about sand. I understand that Jack's got the price down, so that the compliance sand is now available, basically for the same price as the as the cement sand. <clears throat> Roberto. And it's just time to do this pro get this project done. The sand is really, to me, one of the key components from taking this to, from being a nice beach project to being a, uh, a destination location. Uh, Jack has had, um, <clears throat> told you in the past about the uh, volleyball tours that want to come to SunWest. I was on the phone a couple weeks ago with uh, Chris Colgan, who owns uh, Dig the Beach Volleyball, and he spent about 10 minutes to me on the phone with me, swearing up and down that he will never, ever, ever go back to Clearwater Beach. And one of the reasons there, um, um, it's the, the <coughs> excuse me, the permitting process to go through with Clearwater, a lot of money. Just bottom line is it, it costs like, just for somebody to go to play volleyball there for one day, there's going to run them just about $30 a day just to park. So Christopher wants to bring his tour up here. And what that would basically translate to into, into some money things is he said, look on the average of about each time he has a tournament, about 100 hotel nights, Anywhere from between the players and the fans and the family, 750 to 1,000 people coming to this area from out of the area to visit a, um, to visit a beautiful beach. Uh, another person that told me, uh, Peter Massoni, who runs Tampa Bay Ultimate, Ultimate Frisbee, they do tons of tournaments in this area. Uh, Peter told me that each time they run a tournament, you can expect anywhere from 500 to 750 people to come to be participate in the tournament or be family members. What are they going to do? They're going to come here. They're going to they're going to uh, take advantage of the Wakeboard Park. They're going to uh, take advantage of the beach. Hopefully, visit some of the businesses here. And since it's such a beautiful area, we hope they're going to they're probably going to come back because there is no other other area in um, in this entire Tampa Bay area like Sun West Park. My name is Sandy Spears. I uh, I'm a resident and a commercial property owner and my main concern right now is not just that we have the park but that we have the park done the proper way we have one chance to do this right we need the second bathroom we need the splash pad and we need the additional parking if we had this great park and people would want to go there and say Gee, it'd be great to go, but you could never find a place to park. We don't want that to happen. What's good for this area is good for everybody in Pasco, and we just need to make this happen. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Larry Daly. I live at 8150 Brent Street in Port Ritchie. Uh, I wasn't expecting this morning to hear all this about SunWest, but I know a little bit about it, and I'm also very supportive of it. And uh, I know you guys will make good decisions when it Good morning. comes to that. I'm the senior class president at Ridgewood High School, and my name is Taylor Nye. We need to get serious about SunWest. You know, I've heard a lot about, about it. I went there and saw it with Chairman Mariano, but I, I was impressed with it, but I'm shocked to hear some of the things ranging that are said from it has the money it needs right now to we don't have money for certain parks. First of all, we need to realize that our TDC recommended all of the capital funds that our taxpayers pay for to go into this project. The commission has chosen not to approve this, and that's upsetting. It said we want to save money for a private hockey and ice skating rink, but why is it a good idea to withhold public tourism tax dollars 
in the interest of a private organization that doesn't even want the money, let alone really qualify for it. And if someone came forward requesting money for another ice skating rink, why would we put public money forward to compete with private industry? Again, let's look at the major fact that $450,000 out of 973,000 recommended dollars was approved. It's been said repeatedly to the point of becoming jaded that we don't have the money we need to begin work on various projects in SunWest. And the reason this project does not have the money it needs is because of your decision to withhold $523,000. Again, it's for this cause of there's a, some sort of private industry in Wesley Chapel. You've allocated $10.5 million to Wesley Chapel, and a total of zero TDC dollars was allocated to Northwest Pasco until now. SunWest is the only shovel-ready project in Pasco County, and zero other projects in the county qualify for funds. I'm going to take a break from my script. As a senior class president, I get the opportunity to talk to a lot of people in my school. I message them. And when I find out where they want to go to beaches, I say, you want to go to Green Key? You want to go to Hudson? Yeah, no. They don't want to go there. Pasco Beach is our laughing stock. And that's why whenever I ask them, they want to say, oh, do you want to go to Honeymoon in Pinellas? Do you want to go to Clearwater? Do you want to go anywhere else except Pasco County? And I don't want to drive the most dangerous road in America just to go to a beach. Every time I get on 19, I swear I'm going to be hit by somebody. It's so important that we look around. There's SunWest supporters all around me. There's SunWest supporters all around the county in Wesley Chapel, in Lando Lakes, in Dade City, in Newport Ritchie, in Port Ritchie, and Hudson that want this project to go through. And it's so important that we listen to the experts in the TDC from all around the county that recommend that this project will bring in the tourism money our county needs to stop being a laughing stock with its speeches. I want to thank you for your time and consideration. I'm going to ask you one more time. Please approve all of this money so we can actually get Pasco to the top. Thank you. As a voter and a resident of Hudson, Florida, I support Sun West entirely. It needs to have all of the funds available that can be made by this honored group that stands that sits before me. I request that the county commissioners reconsider their allocations and further look into Sun West as a viable project. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Jack Farrell. Uh, I'm currently vice president of Sea Pines. Have been president of Sea Pines for a number of years, and have been on the board of Kona. Uh, I'm. You know what needs to be done. You've heard enough people ask you for the funding. This is an important project for the West Pasco. I've lived here 20 years, and I've watched. The corridor on 19 die. You go along Route 19 and count the number of buildings that are empty and a lack of business. We need a shot in the arm. And this is the opportunity for a shot in the arm. We really need to get this project done to bring the visibility into Hudson and Pasco County. And I think you will see the benefit along the corridor as you bring people in and spend the money on this project. And I hope that this amount of money that we're talking about is not the only amount of money that you're going to consider to spend, because this is going to bring a lot of people into Pasco County. And the events that I've heard that are planned in terms of volleyball tournaments, and the wakeboarding, you're going to have a lot of people come from other states in here to visit us. And what are they going to do? They're going to spend money. Hello, my name is Victor Branson. Bring business into the area. It would bring people here to, to come to such a lovely park. It, it's a shame. It's a shame that it just sits there and is not going to be a use in the funds be uh, allocated for it that should have been allocated. Thank you. Thank you. Lee Henley. I come this morning in support of Sunwest Park 
But before I, I get into that, I'm, I'm really pleased to see all these young folks here this morning and see their involvement in government activity. Especially this young man right here must be on the debate team. <laughs> he does such a good job. But anyway, uh, all of you know me, and you know I'm really active in government affairs, and I have been. I've, I've lived in this region 65 years, and I've, I've seen growth in different parts of, of the three-county area that I've lived in, which is Hillsboro, Pine Ellison, up here. And I've lived here since 1977, and I've been involved in a, a lot of the things that have developed the, our county. And some of them did well, did very well, some didn't do so well. But you have to have a vision about things, the development of a community for the benefit of the lifestyle of the people that live in it. And Sun West Park is going, in my vision, improve not only Hudson area, but the whole county, because it's going to bring tourist dollars, it's going to bring revenue, it's going to in, improve the tax base of the county, and it's just a win-win situation to have SunWest Park. You look at Pinellas, the wealth in Pinellas, because of their beaches. We need to develop the West Coast. I was once on a committee in Hudson to develop a city of Hudson. And that was back in the early 80s. <laughs> and it never got off the ground, but we, back then we were talking about developing our coast. And there's a wealth out there in the Gulf of Mexico just waiting to be harvested. And we need to take the bull by the horn, develop SunWest Park, and get it off the ground and build a good foundation, get whatever the funding is, and I, I urge the county commission to provide whatever funding you can find to develop that with a good, strong base that we can build on for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Ann I live at 18313 Floralton Drive, and I'm here to speak on behalf of the Hudson High School class again on SunWest Mines. Um, I've been here since 9.30 this morning, and I haven't heard one bad thing about SunWest Mines and it being developed, so that says something. Um, like said before, Pasco County has been the laughing stock of pretty much Florida with beaches and everything. We need the extra parking. If people want to come to Hudson for volleyball tournaments and sand soccer and even the ultimate frisbee then we need the extra parking the splash pad I've also seen parents on Facebook saying about how they take their kids all the way to Tarpon Springs which is in Pinellas County to take them to a splash pad for their kids to have fun like families who play together always stay together that's the saying that my dad always says so the second bathroom it's really important because if we only have one bathroom then the kids aren't really motivated to say oh I have to use the bathroom and walk all the way across SunWest Mines we need that second bathroom having the mines in Hudson just makes it better for us kids because we don't want to spend our gas money driving all the way to Clearwater driving to Fred Howard even to like Rogers Park hi I'm Amber Mariano I just want to talk about my perspective on the mines I know you hear a lot of things like there's nothing to do here nothing going on and as cliche as that is it's very true I'm going to college in Orlando and I can't see any reason why I would want to bring my family back to Pasco County there is nothing here that would be so conducive to a family lifestyle other than pub the public school system and a few um, like soccer parks or things like that so I think that this would turn more of Pasco County from like a bedroom community into like an active community where businesses would want to come and stay I work at um, Best of Philly Cheese Steaks, and we have a map of the mines up behind the grill. And I can't tell you how many times people come up to me and say, what's this, what's this, what's this? And I am try to explain to them what it is, and they have no idea what I'm talking about. Because 
no one expects such um, great potential from this county. So I think that this is more than just a, in, a income bringer. It's it's something that could change the lifestyle of the people in the county, and I think that's what's really important about it. So that's my opinion. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners. Um, my name is Tom, but I'm here to number one support, of course, the Sun West uh, Park as well. But um, also, later in today, you are going to be considering the PACE program. My name is Donna Murray. I started coming to Pasco County in 84 when my parents bought. I became a uh, property owner in 98. I am, um, I want to, I am definitely in, in complete support of SunWest and everything that we want to get accomplished at the very beginning to make it the very best that Pasco County can offer. I am a great-grandmother. I have grand, great-grandchildren that would love the splash pad. I don't want to have to go down 19 all the way to Tarpon Springs when I can go 15 minutes from my house and take my great-grandchildren and enjoy a day at the there. My name is Donna Coleman. I just want to start out by saying I just recently moved to this area. I'm from Deerfield Beach on the East Coast. And over there they have Quiet Waters, which has the wakeboard and the splash pad. And it brought so much revenue to the surrounding areas. Boca Raton, Deerfield Beach, Del Rey. It brought so much revenue to all the small businesses, the restaurants, the hotels, because they brought in all the bigger, you know, the um, tournaments and the Renaissance Festival. And that just, it went down the chain of everyone won off of the situation of having this park. So I just want to say that I think it's a, uh, Great job that Jack's doing, and I and the others that support it. I believe that it's essential to have the extra parking that can support the tournaments and the extra bathroom. I second that motion. That is, it's necessity, and that I'm with old Dixie RV and boat storage, and I think it would do great for all the small businesses and give us revenue that we so desperately Good morning commissioners my name is Janet O'Hara and I have spoken with a lot of residents in, of Hudson and Spring Hill who don't even know about this park and they want to know why it's been kept such a secret and the people in Spring Hill say they're bored with Wikiwachi and they would definitely come if this park was open uh, we need uh, this park for our youth for people who love beach fun and for economic growth. We need the second bathroom, as everybody's been telling you about, also to, keep the, to try to keep the waters pristine. And we need more parking, because uh, when people find out about this, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people coming. If you ever go to Hudson Beach to eat at the restaurant or Sam's, you have to ride around. On the evenings and weekends, you ride round and round and round and there's just not enough parking, and people leave and go other places. So that's why I'm here asking you to think positive and please vote, vote yes for, on this agenda so the residents can enjoy this wonderful park. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner, um, just looking at the time, how many more names do we have? Because um, I have just, a little presentation I want to make. Yeah, we don't have actually... He's the last one. I'll just check the two names that I called before didn't show up, and then I'll just call for anyone else, and then we'll be done. Good morning, commissioners. My name I've is come Jim. here to, first of all, I want to say that I am in total support of the SunWest Park. And even though that's not my main reason for being here, my main reason, as you can see up here, is that we have three gentlemen coming to Faso County. Yeah, I just wanted to say um, I moved here from Clearwater in 1970. And I raised my children, and I have my grandchildren here, and I am also a great-grandmother. And I am in total support of this SunWest Park because all the years of my children growing up, 
Mom, there's nothing to do around here. And I could see other children getting into trouble. But luckily mine didn't. But my son is very active in soccer. He raised his three daughters. And in fact, my oldest granddaughter, I'm <laughs> getting nervous, um, got a total soccer scholarship up in Ohio. And she was valedictorian at Hudson High last year and also got the soccer scholarship. And my son has been very active. He's coach, soccer coach for all three of them, and they all play. And he told me this year we're not going to Clearwater Beach for sand soccer anymore. It's just too crowded, too expensive. And if they had a sand soccer tournament here, it would bring a lot of people. And I think it would be just wonderful to have children in this area to have something to do that's, that's good for the children. And I just think it would be great. And I thank you for all your support. Thank you, thank you Jack. OK, seeing no one else lined up for public comment, we'll close public comment. And Commissioner Stark, you want to do a presentation? Uh, well, I, I just um, heard some things in the audience that may be, uh, may not, there may be some information you don't know, and I'm the new commissioner, so I ask for some information. And I just, first, I think I would like you to show the parks plan that we operate under, you know, we, we plan way ahead. Yes. And so um, this commission, what is it, every 10 years does a parks master plan? How often do, we, do you do a parks master plan? The last master plan was done in 2001. We're in the process of updating that plan now. Okay. So and that's how we budget funds. So um, it was sent to me. Yeah, do you I'm, have it? Well, I, I do have it, but I'm not sure what you want me to show with the rather lengthy PDF. No, no, it's just one page. Let me get it for you. Where is your? Because I've got a lot of emails come in since this last meeting. So which page do you want? They just they just highlighted one one page of the parks master plan. Who who sent that to me? Are you are you talking about the excerpt that I sent? Yes. You? Yeah. Because it's a sixty nine or something page document. So this is just what we're operating under. What's, what's wrong with go, that go screen? Ahead. I'm going to have to forward okay. it to Paula. She's going to have okay. to copy it to a disk and then put it on the other machine. But that's All right. Really what's wrong with our uh, screen? That the, it's the on seal... Elmo. Oh, okay. Um, well, while they're loading it up, then I, I asked uh, them to do an analysis of the funds spent uh, east of, west of the Sun Coast since 1989 until, I guess it's 2010, is what no, we're looking for at? Now. What's okay. being programmed this year? Okay, so if you could show an analysis of the funds that have been spent versus population. And we divided it from north of 52, which I, if you'll give me back that piece oh. of paper, I'll put it on the Elmo. Okay. Okay, so can you explain your, what you've written there? Um, sure. Uh, so as the commissioner requested, what we did was we um, have a summary from the Parks and Recreation Department of all the expenditures in all the parks in the West Impact Fee Zone. Um, so we totaled the spending north of State Road 52 and the spending south of State Road 52. So north of State Road 52 since 1983 this year, um, $7.5 million dollars. South of State Road 52, $12 million. Then we took the information on population, which is at the bottom, and uh, again, north of uh, State Road 52 population versus south of State Road 52 population. The population north of State Road 52 at, at 34,600, um, the population south at 179,625, and then um, determine the per capita spending. So north of State Road 52 per capita, uh, we have spent uh, since 1980 $216.87 per resident. 
south of State Road 52, $67.17 per resident. So the board has invested uh, tremendously in terms of per capita spending north of State Road 52. I, I didn't do an analysis of where the tourism funds have been collected from in the in the county, but I'm sure we could. You can't get away. But this is this is this is not a. This is we're talking about parks. Right. Um, we're not. Yeah. Th th this is. The, we're talking about parks, and um, and I also can you bring up the parks master plan, which is what we operate by. So. If, if we were to, well, so um, can you explain what we've got here? So when the 2001 Parks Master Plan was completed, um, what they do is they, they look at the analysis of, of what is the need for parks based on resident um, uh, size, what is the anticipated growth that is forecasted to occur in the county, and what is the need for additional park and recreation facilities. So this was in 2001. It was also the basis for the park and recreation impact fees. And there is park and recreation impact fee money in this park. This park does have a blend of parks money as well as tourism money. Um, and in the parks master plan then made a recommendation. They start with here's all the needs and then here's what can be afforded over the 10 years. So this is from the cost feasible plan. And in the cost feasible plan it recommended essentially a district park in the Wesley Chapel area which is the Wesley Chapel District Park. Hold on, please. Um, Hold on. It recommends a district park in the Odessa Trinity area, which we're just getting ready to kick off with the Starkey Ranch project. Uh, it recommends a scaled down Dade City Park, and then it recommends an additional boat access park, uh, which is the um, boat access facility that's planned for SunWest should we get the um, permit from the Army Corps of Engineers. Well, I just wanted to make sure that you knew how we, how this board operates this was, and that's the plan that we're following although we jumped ahead be, um, but and then you have an idea of the funding that's been invested in Hudson and also know that this board voted 4-1 to support the Sun West Park and we're all very excited about it and and I think they're going to be starting soon so I think we'll be starting soon we started four months ago yeah, well, we, we have spent... Well, you no, know, you know, I'm Jack, a, wait, Jack, could I just say something? I mean, Catherine was just making a statement, and then you, you respond to her, started soon, it started four months ago. You know, we have been supportive. I asked Heather, when we voted on this park, like we do many other things, we said this park would be built in phases, phases. We, we put in, I just gave it away so I don't have the chart, but it's, it's close to four, what is it, 3.9 million? Yes, ma'am. Million dollars. You know, there are a lot of needs in this county. And when you talk about a splash park, I agree. I think it's a great idea. In fact, there is a group raising funds to put a splash park at Veterans. And I, they'll be coming in to do that. I, and I admire you young people. But I think we live in a day and age where we need to separate wants from needs. Everybody wants stuff right away. And I'm, I'm a little like that. People have said to me, I want to change the world. I'm looking at Kathy because I drive animal services crazy. And we want this park. It's not that we don't want it. And I really believe that once we get going, we have a park going up in Land Lakes. They, too, want a stage, which they're not getting the funding for. The Parks and Rec people have said, once it starts, people will contribute money. I think once the Wake Park gets in there, why can't he be responsible for the bathrooms? I, I just believe, what I just think, we've worked really hard. This has been a good board. You all seem to want businesses to come in. If they see us as a dysfunctional board, if you sit there and say, we've done nothing, we're ashamed of the county, you're not going to get businesses in. So I think, I think that we are working, we're trying, money has been expended, this park is supposed to be built in phases, you will have a park, you will have a beach. 
I think our administrator should show you what phase one will give you, and then we'll gradually work to phase two. I mean, our, our staff has sat here now for two hours that we're supposed to be presenting other agenda items. This is the second meeting this month. It's not that we're mean or we're stupid or we don't know what's going on. There's just X amount of dollars. This is supposed to be a county park. That's how it started out. Not a tourism attraction. And I think it's very difficult to separate the two. It may very well morph into that, which I think is exciting. I hope you get your volleyball courts. We sit up here and we feel, we feel really concerned. You sent out a flyer, I saw it, telling the people to come to I you. handed them out. What? I handed them out too. Well, I, I think you're doing a disjustice to, injustice to this board. I really do. Let, we're not, wow. Well, I think so. It's making us look, you can scream and holler. It's making, I've been on this board going on 20 years. We've tried to work together. It's not like we don't want this. There's X amount of dollars. Commissioner Schrader, hold on, please. Commissioner Schrader. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, there was a radio personality called Paul Harvey that used to tell the rest of the story. And Commissioner Mariano has shared with you all his side of the story. And you all don't want to hear the truth and the rest of the story. But the rest of the story is the fact is that Mr. Reed even alluded to the fact that in 2007, this board accepted a $3 million settlement from Gary Grubbs's corporation to resolve outstanding issues. But for that $3 million, we wouldn't even be having this conversation today because that was the seed money to be able to start a park amenity, a beach-like park amenity. It was never intended to be a tourism attraction, never was never intended to use tourism funds to do that. Pasco County put out a request for proposal for how are we going to use this $3 million effectively. And Patrick Panikos responded to that request for proposal and suggested a wakeboard facility. And all he was asking for was to be able to make use of the county property, and he was going to invest over a million dollars of private dollars to build this. Why would we want to accept that? So we worked out an arrangement with Mr. Panikos. So now we've got a private investor that's willing to invest over a million dollars plus $3 million that we've set aside. This board, through several budget workshops, has appropriated over a million dollars of impact fee money to SunWest Mine. And just recently, we appropriated $450,000 of tourist development money because it can be used for improving the beach area. Plus, you have Gary Grubbs that's doing site work that in our, what we have been told is in excess of a million dollars. If you add all those up, that's a six and a half million dollar facility that's costing the taxpayers of Pasco County $1.5 million. This board approved a contract just under $4 million. The only commission to vote against it was your resident commissioner. So what he's doing is because he cannot ask for it to be reconsidered, he's having town hall meetings, He's spreading propaganda. He's, he's misrepresenting the board. You can't use tourist dollars. So you all continue to come here and act like we're not supporting. I've been to SunWest two or three times. It's my intention to go out there again on Friday. I'm happy. I'm elated. I think it's going to be a fantastic beach-like amenity. There are boating enthusiasts all over this county and neighboring counties that would like to have access to the Gulf. I think we all realize the benefits. We just heard from, from a lady that has sailboats. To be able to go and use, utilize the coastline, whether it be staying at hotels along the coast, whether it be going to restaurants along the coast, but there's not hardly a day that I don't drive to West Pasco and see people pulling their boats, but they need a place to put them in. The Urban Land Institute even acknowledged that Pasco County has limited access to the Gulf of Mexico. Why wouldn't you want to be able to bring all of Pasco County and neighboring counties to come in here to be able to do that. This board has supported SunWest entirely. Commissioner Mariano is disappointed, but this is a collegial board. You know, there's, this is a democracy. And in a democracy, you have a majority rules. And four members of this board 
with the information that's provided to us, realize that it's in our best interest to do this in phases, and it's going to be done correctly. And as other funds become available, we can address those. But we have priorities, as Commissioner Starkey alluded to, and there's other parts. Commissioner Mullary was on here along with myself when Amendment 1 was passed. We had people come to us and say, use tourist dollars to offset the cost of parks and recreation. If we start using tourist dollars to put in a splash pad at this park, they're going to ask us to put in a splash pad at Wesley Chapel. They're going to ask us for a splash pad at Starkey. They're going to be asking for one in Central Pasco. You can't use tourism dollars to supplement parks across Pasco County. I'm sorry, you just can't do it. I believe that once this, this park is built, you will all have an amenity that we can all be extremely proud of. We'll all be proud to cut the ribbon on it, as we did a fire station earlier today. And you're going to have continual investment of private industry invest in a splash pad, and they can call it whatever they want. Invest in the bathrooms to be able to supplement that. But give us time to be able to move forward. We've approved a contract. We have a contractor that's started work, apparently, and they're, going, they're, they're good to go. I'm going to go visit on Friday and see, see just exactly what's happening out there. But I'm convinced that you're going to have a great amenity, Ernie, and it's going to be something that all of Northwest Pasco and all of Pasco County can be extremely proud of. But what you're asking us today is use funds that, in my belief, and I believe three other board members believe, is not appropriate for that intended use. As we have impact fees and other park fees that become available, we'll be able to use it up there. So, Mr. Chairman, I, I know the hour, the hour is late. You, all these people are here for item R. One or, one or two. R two, and I'm going to make a motion that that be uh, withdrawn. I hope that there's a second, and I hope there's three votes to withdraw that to allow administration the opportunity to correctly evaluate as the construction is ongoing. They can report back to us in a timely manner. You've continued to interfere with the contractor. You've interfered and in, in taken time away from staff when four members of this board have given direction to county administration to move forward. So. I would hope there's a second to withdraw item R2. These folks can then go about their day, and I hope there's three votes to be able to support that. And I'm going to call the question. I'm going to. We're going to have some discussion. We're going to have some discussion. I'm calling the question. We're having discussion. I'm calling the question. No. I'm calling the question. I'm calling the question. It's late. It's almost noon. I'm calling the question. Because you don't want the information out to the people. I'm calling the question. You do not want the information out to the people. Does that mean that we vote? Blair. Robert's Rules of Order allows me to call the question. Can I pass the gavel? You can pass the gavel, but I still want to have discussion. But the question has been called. That we doesn't. haven't even brought the item up. He just brings it off the floor. Not even in sequence, but off the floor. Mr. Chairman, there is a second and a motion on the floor, and I'm calling the question on the motion. Please call the motion. Politics at its finest, please, folks. Please call the All motion. in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. No. Nay. Thank you. Thank you. Can I make a comment? Vote's been made. I, we need to move the consent agenda. No, we don't. Can I make them? Can I just talk? Thank you. you For two hours we've listened to Sun West. No, you're, now you're listening to me. Now you're listening to me. You had your chance to speak. You're go ahead, run out the building. Run out the building. The problem is. Madam, we had 523,000 left in tourist development. Exactly. We are going to put heads in beds. We've spent money on beach renourishment. Are you aware of that? Beach renourishment projects. Guess what? If you take the other fund that hasn't been even talked about, presented before these people, we could use beach nourishment fund that hasn't even presented to this. We're building a boardwalk down where these kids just cleaned everything out. Listen to me. I, you're out of order. I'm speaking. You're out of order. And I do. You do and I appreciate but your forfeit. I want the people to know there was 900000 The board did not want to spend it because it was tourism money. I said split the baby and give them 450 We gave you 450 I mean, look at look at. Commissioner Mullary, let me just help you with new information that's come up and is why I brought this item up. Okay, Commissioner Schrader was worried about the boat parking. Turns out the way we designed the parking lot wasn't as simple as explained to me, so we actually have to modify that. Secondly, $1.7 million, please, quiet. $1.7 million was all they needed to go build the two Wesley Chapel District Parks. That allowed $300,000 more to come available. If I take that 300000 
and I go look at the boardwalk down to the south, listen to me, if I build the, take the boardwalk down to the south, which you guys voted on, which I said we did not need, and I just build a concrete slab going down there to provide access, I can get the, it, it in line with what was supposed to happen with access with Swift Mud. That's another $120,000. If I take the extra money for beach tree nourishment, couple that with the 523 left, I can probably get the extra parking done, and maybe with the contractor working this through with an extra million dollars worth of work for them, maybe we can get the bathroom done. I've got better mix, I've got C mix, I've got plumbers, I've got contractors, I've got electricians, all willing to donate work to get that extra bathroom. If I get the bathroom money for both of them, I could probably get both bathrooms. What I don't want to hear happen, I hope you listen to it, but the people talked about the bathroom situation or the bacteria situation at Hudson Beach. You know how many times we have to close that, close that beach? What I don't want to see is a fixed body of water all around us. And those kids, like my nephew was nine years old, went and looked at the water, and he looked, and I showed him where the other bathroom was. I said, would you go down to that bathroom if you had to go? He goes, I'm going to the big one. So let me tell you, the people out here, if they go in that little cove area, and the wind blows in, and we have to do health inspections out there, and I have to shut this beach down once, that contractor that's out here, if he can't get people to come to the water, do you think he's going to fail? And then what have we got? We've got a whole big wide beach over that's been now polluted with bacteria from people. That's what my concern is. That's why these bathrooms are so important. And if I had run an event out there, right now your staff, even before the May 22nd meeting we had, they didn't even know that it was going to be dirt on the ground. Not even sod, but dirt. So if you've been out there, Lime Rock, and Commissioner, Commissioner Wilson, you were out there when we did groundbreaking, how many cars get stuck? I've got soft soil that's going to be out there. People get stuck in the mud with one good tournament and the summer rain, even, even the winter rain, we lose all our credibility. If you want to be premier, and I greatly appreciate you putting up that 450, that idea, because if it didn't come from you, it probably wouldn't have happened. So that's a great step forward, but I want you to think about this too. All these people have been paying ta taxes for years. For years, I know, no, I'm saying, you got ho but, you, but you've got hotel, you've been paying this tax for 23 years, you have spent 90% of the money over there rounded, there's 5% left, there's another five. They want to get the other five to make this as good as this park can be. When Walt Disney opened up Disney World, did he do it half-baked? Half he made a great presentation. We need to make a great presentation on this park. Does. It's that you good. Are and I Go with me on this one. Go with me on this one. <laughs> you, 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 were, you, were, you were an activist. You were in the situation for something that the people wanted. We're in a republic, not a democracy, by the way. These people elected us to represent their wishes. I think they made it clear what they want. I'm not changing, Sean. I'm going to explode the clock. All right. We're on break till 1.30.